London has its own henge, smaller than Stonehenge and without the stones. It's in the field behind me. But there are parallels with Stonehenge that suggest the builders of both monuments had similar beliefs. And this one is also 500 years older than Stonehenge itself. There's nothing to see here now but farmland flanked by the River Ash and the M3. In 1989, archaeologists unearthed a circular enclosure surrounded by a ditch and three causeways leading to the centre. The northeast entrance was guarded by a male skeleton in a crouched position, aligned like Stonehenge on the midsummer sunrise. Ten metres to the west, a woman's torso was buried. Ten metres to the east, a deformed dog's head. At the point which marks the most southerly moonrise, lumps of red ochre had been deposited. At the same point on Stonehenge, a stone mace head and the cremated remains of children were found. Also, like Stonehenge, there was an avenue leading away to a river, in this case an avenue of pits leading to the River Ash. But we can't tell who or what was worshipped here. One item placed in the ditch was a wolf skull. The evidence shows that this was a place of gatherings and feasting for over a thousand years, but we can't tell if this was at the same time as the ritual. One thing we do know is who was buried here. The Shepperton woman, as she became known, was reconstructed by the forensic anthropologist Caroline Wilkinson. This is perhaps the first Londoner's face we can gaze upon. But like many Londoners, she was not born here. She was born in Derbyshire. Now we know this from isotope analysis of the levels of lead in her teeth. We cannot know what brought her to London 5,500 years ago, near the confluence of the River Ash, the River Colne and the River Thames, to live, die and possibly worship. <laughs>